What's up you guys? Thanks for clicking on the video. Before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't seen already, UFC bantamweight Ramon Tavares recently posted ring cam footage of a drive-by that happened right outside his mom's house in Jacksonville, Florida. This comes nearly five years after the death of his little brother, which happened back in 2019 in somewhat of a similar fashion. Check out this ring cam footage he posted. Lining out the situation on his Instagram, the post read, It's unfortunate that I even have to make a post like this, but I cannot let this be swept under the rug. Monday, July 29th, 2024, at 10.05pm, a group of armed men drove up on me at my mother's house and tried to take my life. By the grace of God, I made it out with no injuries and was able to grab my own firearm and return fire in self-defense. This city is unforgiven, and it's worse that JSO does nothing to correct the problem. I lost my brother in 2019 due to gun violence, and his killers I get to be caught. Now I find myself almost in the same situation. JSO did the bare minimum for my brother and is now doing the same for me. They assumed I was targeted due to gang violence or a problem I caused. I don't bother anyone. I stay in my own lane. I focus on my career and family. Even after explaining this, they continue to insinuate that I was involved in something that brought this outcome upon myself. Nobody is perfect and everyone has a past. However, I have changed significantly from who I was 10 years ago. For such an incident to occur out of nowhere is alarming. It makes me view my life and family through an entirely different lens. This is a daily reality in my city. I am not the first, nor will I be the last. I am tired of remaining silent about my brother's case and I refuse to let this incident slide either. Many other families in my city have endured similar situations, crying out for justice just as my family is. My family feels unsafe and I fear for my children, who nearly lost their father, the person striving to change their lives. It is tragic that I have so much love for my city, yet I am compelled to leave. I will use this situation to speak out against the ineffectiveness of JSO and their disregard for the less fortunate parts of the city. They seem indifferent to whether lives are lost or at risk. I am sick of it. This could have been a memorial post. I could have lost my life just like my brother, or somebody else could have lost theirs trying to take mine. I'm done being silent. I ask for your support in spreading this message as far as we can. I am blessed and happy to be alive, but I am leaving Duval. With the information Ramon gave us, I did a bit of digging into the JSO and his brother Gabriel's death, and let's just say, he's not the only one complaining about the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. It's crazy because things started hitting the news outlet seven months after Gabriel's death. We found an article on News for Jax stating, after more than seven months, two families are still pleading for answers after the deaths of their loved ones both killed in a shooting at a Jacksonville apartment complex. They also posted something on Crime Stoppers back on December 27, 2019 that stated, on Friday, December 6, two people were shot and killed at an apartment complex on Arabian Court off Atlantic Boulevard, just west of Southside Boulevard, according to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. The victims were identified as Gabriel Tavares, 23, and Jordan Phelps, 24. Calls began coming into the newsroom about gunfire in the area at 10.45 p.m., an hour later, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office confirmed that homicide detectives were investigating at a shooting at the apartment complex. They posted the hotline and stated those would remain anonymous and could be eligible for a cash reward up to $3,000. Despite the rewards totaling $8,000, no information has been given and the shooters still remain at large. It's pretty clear that the family wants justice and are still pleading for answers because News for Jax posted an update on January 28th, 2024, stating that there's still no arrests in December double murder. Now despite the details of this case not being easy to find when you google it, what does pop up immediately are the complaints against the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. There's articles on previous complaints from officers involved in bloody arrests, headlines about the JSO failing to follow up on multiple complaints, and even one of an officer getting arrested in February of 2024. We also found a video on Facebook from nearly two years ago that stated more than two dozen complaints were filed against a Jacksonville Sheriff's Office officer who was accused of sending explicit images of himself to a teenage boy. And just two months ago, the JSO investigated itself for claims of bias, prejudice, and misconduct. Now, we don't know what exactly the JSO has done to try and search for the people responsible for the death of Ramon's brother, but the sheriff's office is certainly not new to complaints and has a large history of ineffectiveness that dates back to who knows how long. One of the comments under Ramon's IG post from a user named Deval Original stated, there aren't many who know about the underbelly of the city. It has been the same way for a long time and it's unforgiving. Take care of those who are around you, trust in God, and 
and go to a place where you don't have to look over your shoulder. It's also worth noting that Ramon has a pin post from 2015 where it seems his brother was arrested and the caption read, free me, which is likely why they insinuated Ramon was involved in something that led to him being targeted, but I'm sorry, that's bullshit because that shouldn't mean they take his claims any less serious. So when Ramon says the JSO does the bare minimum to look into these cases, it's hard not to believe him. He's also defended himself responding to a few comments under his post, one stating, I sit there and ask myself, damn, what did this guy do to make them mad? Ramon responded, trust me, if I did some shit that I deserve something like that to happen to me, I definitely wouldn't make a post about it. I stay in my own lane, mind my business, don't know why this happened at all. Sadly, that's all we could find on the situation. I was trying to find the officers names who were at the scene to see if anything popped up when googling the name but aside from the two articles i shared there really wasn't much about gabriel's death and if it wasn't for mma media ramon's story wouldn't have made headlines reflecting on all the support that happened since ramon went public with this i did catch this ig story of his where he stated still haven't even dwelled on what actually happened because all of the problems that stem from this that i now have to worry about just want to say thank you for everybody that sent love my way and shared this it means a lot and this is just the beginning of the most important part of my story much love so we'll see what comes from this but anyways guys let me know what you guys think in the comments below and as always i'll catch you on the next one